Hi everybody, this is Kate with Glazer's Camera. We are back for our fourth session of the day for Glazer's Photo Fest, the virtual edition. Um, so we're excited for this next session. We've had a lot of great sessions so far today. This has been a lot of fun. And for today's session, we have uh, Zach Noyle, Canon Explorer of Light. So I wanna introduce him, but I wanna introduce somebody else first, uh, because we also have Kyle Valla online, who is our local Canon rep. Um, so if you've been to Glazers before, you've probably met him before. And um, so he's gonna be around to help facilitate answers to some of the Canon questions that may come in. Um, and then obviously we have Zach on, who's gonna talk about his experience uh, doing underwater and uh, surf photography. And so we're just excited to get this kicked off. Um, if you have questions during the session, please feel free to post those on either our YouTube channel or in the Facebook comments. We're gonna ask as many of those as we can uh, during this time. So Kyle, I think you had a couple of words that you wanted to start with before we get started. Yeah, hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. Really, really excited to have our Canon Explorer of Light, Zach Noel with us, uh, streaming from Hawaii. And we will, he's just wonderful photographer as you'll see from his images that he's showing. Great uh, experience both in and out of the water and has shot for ESPN, National Geographic, Sports Illustrated. So uh, really accomplished in his field of surf photography and just getting the gear uh, safe and in the water. <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be inspired to do some shots of your own. Uh, water down where he is typically a bit more blue than what we see up here in Seattle, but uh, <laughs> really wonderful shots. And he'll give you the tools and know-how of uh, how he gets it done. So without further ado, Zach, thanks for joining us. Hi, Kyle. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, Glazers, for having me and for Canon for bringing me along. Um, you know, as Kyle said, I'm streaming here from Hawaii. This is where I was born and raised. Amazing place. And it's where I really draw my inspirations from. It's a place that I have that has given me so much to be the photographer that I am. And I feel that it's really been able to shape me and create me and really help me to move along my career. My, my photography started, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background first guys. So we're gonna go through some background and then we're gonna go through a little bit of a slideshow with some photos, some behind the scenes, how I got them and everything that went into getting those special moments. So I've been around photography all my life. My dad is a commercial photographer based out of Honolulu, Hawaii as well. And he shoots more hotels, food and fashion. Growing up, you know, our studio was below our house and, you know, it wasn't something that I was always interested in. You know, if he had some food or some models, I was down there, but otherwise I, I wasn't too interested in the photography process. I wanted to be at the beach. And I think that speaks to me so much of like where I found the passion for photography where I found the love for photography and how I navigated my way into becoming the photographer that I am today. And so growing up, we were at the beach constantly, swimming, surfing, out there just having a really great time. And it was something that inspired me. I, I went away to college for a little bit for a semester and going to the mainland, California, we consider the mainland, you know, going to the mainland, I discovered that I really miss the ocean. I really miss those visions of being in the water and seeing those. And what I'm able to see and, and be in the water like that, I'd say 99.9% .9 of people will never see the visions or the waves in the way that I'm seeing. And I'm talking about the people like my mother, someone that would never go in the waves or water. She loves the ocean, but she could never be in these pounding large waves in order to see these photos or these visions. And to me, that's what inspires me. That's what gave me the drive to want to be able to create these images to share with the world and put them there in that moment. Put them there to be able to see these waves. And, and, and you know, there's, there's a certain level of when you're shooting that you want to convey as a photographer, I love telling it in one image. You know, with video, there's a whole nother storytelling element, but being able to see and tell and put yourself there through an image, I feel is a whole art in itself. 
So once I started getting back into a little bit more photography and going through it, I found myself being very pulled to surf photography. And that's obvious because we're in the surf capital of the world. This is where everyone descends upon during the winter months to get that perfect wave at Pipeline. And it was a way that I could express myself shooting these things. And I did swimming and water polo. And so that really helped me with myself to feel confident in these large waves. Quickly, I started pushing myself further. I started going into the waves and I started with a Canon EOS 630 in a homemade fiberglass housing film. And it was something important. My dad was already shooting digital, but he was like, you should learn film, learn on the quality over the quantity, because that's where it's heading. I'm, I'm so lucky that I was able to learn that and hone my manual settings and learning the films and learning those different types of tools. So it's something that I, I'm very lucky for. And with that, Surf Magazine started to take notice. I started to get a little bit more attention, a little bit more contacts, sending my photos in, a photo going from a postage stamp size, you know, my first photo, just so stoked, didn't matter the size, um, to getting covers. And it was the persistence, it was the relationships built. And I believe even to this day, even with less magazines, those relationships are very important. It is how you navigate yourself as a photographer. It is how you take yourself and allow others to learn and to, to work with in that way, because creating this relationship, that's who that photo editor is going to call on. That's who that agency is going to call to because you've created that relationship. It doesn't come overnight. It's something that you need to build the trust. You need to build the momentum and you need to prove yourself. And that's consistency. I think as you'll see through a lot of these images coming up here in a minute, there's a lot of imagery that goes from inspiration, ideation into creation. And to me, I love that about photography. I love seeing something that inspires me, colors, the way the water reflects off of the surface of the ocean. And to me, being able to manipulate and move that in a way that it transforms and works with my photography to come out with a final outcome for a client or just for myself. That's what I love about photography. And that's what we're here for. So I'm gonna jump into a slideshow. I'm just gonna share with you guys my screen and I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry. Here we go. So this is my office. This is my safe place, my retreat, my just reset. To be under the water like this, as you can see in this photo, I'm not on a board. I'm swimming with a pair of swim fins and there's a water housing around my camera. So I have an EOS, um, I have the Canon 1DX Mark II in that housing as you see in this photo right now. And you wanna be fluid. You want to not be in the space or the way of the surfers, of the wildlife, of whatever it is. So having that swimming ability, hey, that water polo treading skills, and just being comfortable in the ocean in this way, it hey, allows Zach. me to do more. It allows me to be comfortable to be in the water like this so that I can shoot these photos. This is how I'm shooting these photos. Hey, Zach. As you can see, the camera is loaded. Yep. Oh, uh, your screen sharing is not working. Can we uh, stop the screen sharing and try it oh, again? Yeah, of course. Sorry. Hang in, folks. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about this, guys. Technical issues. It happens, unfortunately, sometimes. I'm so sorry, folks. It's okay. We've run into our fair share of flubs as well. <laughs> this is our first time doing this live. It's, uh, you know, 
it is bound to happen. So thank you for your patience while we sort this out. It's been a learning experience. I'm so yeah. sorry, folks. No, it's okay. No worries. So let's hope this was it. Okay, here we go. There we go. Are we okay? Yeah. Are we good to go? Yeah, there we go. Well <laughs> Great. Thanks everybody let's go for back hanging to in there I'm for so that. sorry, folks. We, I was just running it through Chrome and it had me change my privacy settings. So I'm very sorry about that on the screen sharing rather than running it through the Zoom app. So thank you for the patience. So again, here you see, just with fit. So I'm only wearing swim fins in this photo. I'm only using fins, so I'm out of the way, swimming underneath the wave here. You can see the housing is Aquatech housing um, with the 1DX Mark II in this specific photo here. And I'll go through a little bit more of the housing and the different functions to it. So you can see that the we're plugging into the remote side so that I have the capabilities to use the pistol grip below. This allows me to focus the photos um, as well as shoot using AI servo. I am using single point and I'll tell you why. To me, the single point, I'm having the greatest control over my image. The 1DX Mark II, let alone the 1DX Mark III now, have so many focus points, many, many focus points, but being able to pinpoint exactly where my action is, whether it's a portrait or the surfer on a wave and I wanna have a little bit more sky above, I wanna make sure that the water in the foreground is not pulling my focus. I wanna make sure that I'm able to shoot exactly where and what I wanna have. Here's the back of the housing here. So you can kind of see, I'm, I have my hand on the dial. Um, there's a Q button just above my finger there and you can see every button. I don't wanna go into the water. This is with the Aquatech housing. It's the Evo Aquatech housing for the Canon 1DX Mark II in this specific photo. I don't wanna go into the water and be limited to the settings I have. I wanna have full control over that so that I know that I'm ensuring the best image for me, for my client, and what I need to accomplish in that moment. Again, you can see it. And so I, I believe I'm shooting with a Canon 11 to 24 millimeter lens. I did take it from my dad to borrow on this specific shoot and he, made very clear to make sure that I did not drown it. I didn't tell him I was gonna just be going so deep and shooting dolphins, but we're able to get some incredible images. And these are the type of images from that day that you just saw behind the scenes photo of me shooting. And this was for Aqualove. And we were shooting um, this new uh, scuba or this new snorkeling set. And we were just so blessed to have all these dolphins. This is in Kona um, on the big island, Hawaii. and it's just such a magical moment. There's probably 500 dolphins and they're coming in. They're nocturnal um, animals, mammals, and they were coming in from eating at night and coming into the shallows to be sleeping. And we happened to come upon just a massive pod of these. And what a special moment to be able to see. Again, this is with the 11 to 24. And to me, that lens really um, allows me, I don't want to have distortion. I don't want to have, you know, the bending of the horizon because in these moments and what I'm shooting for this as a client, you want to have that detail, the sharpness, edge to edge. Here again is the back of the housing, just so you can see for the 1DX Mark II and all the different buttons. So the camera is sliding in. The front ports, you're able to change multiple different lenses. You can accommodate whichever lens, pretty much from the widest angle to probably a 70, 200 or 300, you could accommodate in a housing. Again, you see the pistol grip on the bottom. The pistol grip allows me to focus the photos and to shoot it with a little more extension. This is a splash housing. This is not a dive housing. This is a splash housing that is only rated to about 50 feet deep, um, 60 feet, maybe 10 meters. So this is not something that you would use for scuba diving per se, but it is something that is more of the splash housing for the surface and water and surf. As you can see, just getting all my memory cards and everything going. And I think, you know, I didn't put a picture in, but the new 1DX Mark III is using CF Express. And to me, 
that is three times the speed of the CFAS. It's insane. I cannot be waiting between sets or waves to be able to shoot my images. So before I would be shooting 52 frames per wave. So that's from takeoff to exit on a wave at pipeline. With the 1DX Mark III, I am now shooting 74. I don't want to wait for it to buffer. I don't want to wait for it to change. I need to make sure that I'm ready for the next wave. There's multiple waves in a set. So as you can see, this is with the 11 to 24 again, and this is an over under port. And what you get from results like this of shooting, this is in the Maldives here, this photo taken of me, you're getting imagery like this. So when you're looking, it's like, I want to be able to see above and below and get that split level and that water line. You're going to want to use an over under port and preferably a, a quality lens like the 11 to 24 to ensure you get that sharpness within your photo. So this was again in Kona of a triathlete training, but you're able to get it. One thing that, you know, in this photo speaks to and something my dad has always said is shoot loose and edit tight. You know, we're so lucky these cards we're using are 128 gigs. Uh, I can put two in my 1DX Mark III now, back to back, I can either mirror them or have it as a backup. And they have a 512 gig card. That's insane. So it's something that's really important. Capture your photos in the moment, whether you're, whatever you're shooting with, capture those moments when they're in front of you. And then do your tight edit for your client, for your social media, for your friends, for your family, whoever it's going to, do that quick edit and that tight edit. Here's another image example of the over under split. And this is in Sardinia, Italy for Aqualung, and this was a scuba diving photo. And you see the bend and the warp of the image um, just slightly because you're getting that water line. It's very important when you're shooting this to make sure that you're getting that correct exposure. Along with digital, you can open up a little bit more below, but you don't want to blow out the details of the clouds. You want to make sure. And so again, shooting and testing it and looking at it, but also checking your meter. Trust your meter. This is Michael Phelps. Um, recently, we were shooting in San Diego, um, maybe six months ago. And this was, you know, again, shooting the split level. I just want to show you, you don't have to have wide waves or moving waves. You can see that split level, that ser sereneness to the water as his teammate finishes, as Michael takes off, off the blocks. And this is just showing that moment as he's kind of just finishing um, fluidity. And again, with the 11 to 24, I don't want to be using something that compromises the edge to edge sharpness or the quality of my image when shooting subjects of this matter. So let's look at a few different like ideas and options and, and ways you can shoot. So this was in the Maldives of Kai Lenny and I'm actually shooting with a pro photo off camera flash. So I'm using the sync that is attached. You see the wire coming out and that's for the air remote. What that's allowing me to do is to get photos like this. So I'm able to just pop a little bit light off camera right onto Kai with the studio quality style light right on him. So as you can see, again, I'm just going back to that photo. You're seeing just the back of my camera. This is a photo taken by someone else. You're seeing as the sun is going down, Kai is in the shadows. But we want to open that up. We want to make it a little bit more dramatic for this moment. And this is the result of that. So here's another angle of that. And you can see the sky. If, if I was just to shoot this and open it up so that I had the exposure for Kai, I'd be losing the amazing details like this of Kai. The clouds, the colors, the detail, the water dripping down, everything. It, it makes for a very much more dramatic image. Here's a couple more examples as we go through of Kai and just seeing how you're able to capture that using an external light, not on camera, external. And there you can see my assistant on the right holding the light. This is a Profoto B10 that we are using. And here are a few action shots. So again, the assistant as Kai takes off and he's using a foil board in this to get results like this. We're using a high speed sync. We're at a thousand of a second, able to capture this moment and be able to get the color, 
the detail in the clouds while freezing the action and making sure it's sharp. A few more photos. I mean, that reflection in the water on the left side there, that's just makes it. I mean, that I'm close. I am using a Canon 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. Guys, little inside tip. It's one of my favorite lenses. It is tack sharp. It is a gorgeous lifestyle lens. I will show you many more photos coming up with the 24, but it is my go-to lens. Here, shooting into the light. Same concept, but you can see that massive foil board blade as he goes over and just freezing that moment. Also on the right side there, very clean portrait utilizing this light. A few more moments. This is using the light, but putting the light underwater, using a housing for the light so that we can get this and create this luminate effect within the ocean. Almost looks like a pool. But you can see my assistant there holding the light in the bottom left there as Ezekiel Lau just takes to the air. And you know, you could, it's amazing with what we can do with ISO. This is a very different effect, a different effect from slow shutter. I'm gonna show you all of those. We're gonna show you how to achieve those and what we can do with that. But also using the Canon speed light, amazing light. But you see, I'm shooting during the day. I wanna be able to shoot during the day so that I can get results. And you can see I have the buttons on the flash. I can control it. I'm adjusting my exposure, making sure everything's correct. Broad daylight, I'm using it as a fill light. So if you weren't using this as a fill light, we'd have very, very harsh shadows within the turtle's face. You, you would almost not be seeing it. And then if you opened it up, you'd be losing that detail behind. This is tricky underwater to get your exposure. It takes a lot of testing before this moment comes up. And another great example, my dad's actually sitting here with me in this room, but another great example that he's always said is get to know your equipment. Because if I grab a, a new camera and it's like, I, I know cameras to a degree. I mean, I'm, this is what I do for a living, but I know it to a degree, but I don't know all new equipment. So if I just grab a piece of new equipment and now I'm in the moment, chances are I could get lucky, but I'm going to miss that moment. Why? Because I don't know the equipment well enough. When you get a new piece of equipment shipped to you from Glazers, grab it out, take it with you everywhere. Use it. Take the flash, sit in your room, learn to use your flash. Get your Canon speed light and just shoot in your room. Learn, lights on, lights off, all these different things. Use that. Same goes for your cameras. Take your camera everywhere with you because if you wait for just that one moment where you're like, this is the sickest moment, I need to grab my camera, good chance you'll probably miss it. Could get lucky, but it's better to be confident with it and have that experience with your equipment before that time comes. Another image utilizing just a fill flash during the day, um, able to kind of just bring those blues, but also not lose it. A lot of times when you're diving, when you're below, this is probably about 20 feet deep, your color shift. It is so blue, all reds are cut. Magenta reds are cut out. A lot of people use like dye filters and color filters on it. But if you use a fill flash like this, this Canon speed light opens it up just makes it very clean, very nice, little hot on the back of his shell there, but I think it's okay just as the light coming in, but that detail in his face, I mean, that's what makes the shot. This is still using that speed light with Kyleni, and we decided to go with a slightly slower shutter, but getting that, you can see a little bit of highlights on him. We still have detail in the clouds, and getting the little bit of motion gives a little bit more perspective. He is on a foil board again, guys. And he's out of his mind, one of the best watermen I know in the world. And he's using this small kite above his head to get in and ride these swells. They're just under swell, like undertowed, like swells um, that he's able to ride. And again, utilizing the light and just having a little pop on him, um, but getting a little motion there on the right. And, you know, you need to adapt for the moment you're in. And it's crazy because as we have more equipment, as we has, have more, as we have more gear, there's so many more options. But utilizing and honing your craft and your equipment is such an important thing. So you're confident and ready within these moments. I'm gonna show you a little video right here a little bit. 
And this is in the Maldives. Again, the photos I just showed you, but giving you a little bit more perspective on what's happening. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed that. You know, sometimes I, I know this is a blank slide. I'm just holding until I show you to the next one. So sometimes you don't have access to lights. Sometimes you're working with a video crew. So what do you do? And this was in San Diego for a shoot with Michael Phelps, as you see on the right side. So my assistant Gabe here is setting up some PVC pipe we homemade with dive lights. And we're working with a video crew at the same time. Time with an athlete or personality like Michael Phelps is not something that we just have all the time in the world to do. It, it's something that we needed to utilize best. And so we were shooting simultaneously photo and videos the entire time, switching back and forth going. So instead of using a strobe, we utilize all these dive lights. They're just available at your dive store. And yes, we have about eight of them on the bottom. But we were trying to shoot this new goggle, and the concept was to kind of show it more stealth, uh, show Michael um, sort of ninja-like and, and how it's coming. And so this was not a planned shot, but as he was getting into the water, I couldn't help myself but shoot this image. And these are only using the lights underwater. And it's such a, to me, like establishing moment of him. And, you know, it's, it's something that we were able to get imagery like this and the image on the left with the smoke was with a smoke machine and this was the original concept lighting from the bottom a light above water as well but between takes as michael took a break i saw him dive under and just kind of reset himself kind of get it i was like oh can we just get a shot right there as they kind of reset the smoke as they reset everything like that and it ended up being my favorite images as well as the client's favorite images of michael and it's a moment of solitude it's a moment of Michael in his special place. This is, he's the pool shark, you know? And so it's something to be able to talk about. And, you know, we, you can see the block, the um, starting blocks, excuse me, slightly behind him. So, you know, the setting for the pool um, and it's kind of giving him that like ninja stealth, like sneaking up kind of like a vibe to show and highlight these brand new swim goggles that they're releasing from Phelps. And, you know, the challenge is you want to make sure the product is in focus. You want to make sure it looks good. You want to make sure the color is correct. If they're selling this, they don't want you to be altering the color. You need to be shooting this as clean as possible to ensure that their customer base knows this is a correct coloring. So along with that, here are a few other images. And this was just as that light is shining up from the bottom. You, it is great to have the speed light. It's great to have the pro photo light. It's great to have all these different pieces, but using a dive light, using almost a flashlight, an LED panel, you, you can get away with these, but learn and use it and see how it works best for you. Don't just pull it out and expect for it to work. Learn how to use that light. Learn how it works with your camera, how it positioning and adjusting that. The setting that you're seeing before you with me setting up my camera, I'm using a Canon G7X plugged in through USB-C 
right into my laptop. I've set up several LED panels to create a clean effect in here. And I'll show you that again as we kind of go, as we finish the talk, so you can see, and we'll discuss that a little bit more. There's another image of Michael, and just you see that lane line. I, I love this photo as this, the bubbles are just coming up and it's just that quick moment. Honestly, a handful of photos only in this moment. And like I say, shoot, loose, edit tight, but I just shot a ton before our time was up with Michael in the pool like this. And to me, this is such a special moment. This is actually in Waco, Texas. And these are utilizing different dive lights, but similar process. Um, I believe these are the light in motion lights. And we actually are shooting, we have three of the lights and this is a man-made wave pool, believe it or not, in the middle of Texas, a lot of fun. This is my friend Ford Archbolt and flying through the air, waves every couple minutes, constantly going. So I had three of my buddies that were just there on the trip with us holding the lights and we we're able to get some amazing effects. I like the ones with them in it to give perspective of what was kind of going on as well as imagery like this. And to me, that's what I was looking for. There's three lights. You can see the different highlights coming from different sides. You know, it was kind of hard to get everyone together and do it. And then sometimes a wave would hit another guy. He'd be just slightly out of position. So it, it all worked out. And we were able to get imagery like this. And here's an image of all three lights in the wave. And you can see all of the guys holding their lights, just pointing it right up there at Luke Davis. I love with the exposure I was able to. And again, the reason we're using a constant light was because there's a video team. So we had to accommodate them, which, you know, it's give and take. And sometimes the video team will light it and just make it just fabulous, make it so easy for the photographer to go through, snap a couple images and get what you need when you're working on a commercial shoot. Other times I'm controlling and doing that. So I'm like, okay, this is where I want to have the lighting. This is how, and the video team then just kind of backs that up and be able to shoot in that moment and in that way. What happens though, if you don't have any type of light, can you still make it dramatic? Can we use water and light in order to control and maneuver it in the way that you want? Yes. This was in the Caribbean and this is with no lights at all. So this was actually shot with a low overhanging cave above the female diver's head and the sun just peeking above coming through there. And I wanted to create something a little more dramatic. I didn't want just blue as a background. You see that so many times within diving photos of just blue. I wanted to create something with a little more dramatic, a little more just really draw your eye to the diver and highlight that. And it took some scouting. And that goes back to, you know, being prepared for these shoots. If you're going to go out and shoot a new place you've never been to, do some research on the light. Do some research on when the sun sets, when the sun rises. Find that image that you want to do. Find those inspirations. Figure out, it, it's not cheating. If you're looking at who's been there before and what they've done, how can you modify and make it your own? How can you change that moment to capture something that you're so proud of? But learning by mistakes you see in other imagery that you want to improve in your own style. And so I think that's a very important thing as outdoor photographers to learn, to do, to utilize the tools that are out there through apps or on the internet that we can find the weather conditions. You can find where the sun is setting exactly. So, you know, we looked at this place the day before and I was able to be like, okay, I want to be here at 8.30 a.m. I want to be in the water at 8.30. They're like, okay, so we got to leave the boat harbor, you know, at 6.45 because we'll get here at 8. We had to adjust all those things. But that's taking control of the shoot. That's dictating and doing it so I could get the results I wanted to get imagery like this. This was on the new regulator that you see in their mouth there. So how do you highlight that with natural light, utilizing it and doing that? And this is a result that you can do. But having that exposure so you get the background a little bit darker, so that you get that dramatic effect, that's what I wanted to do. That's how I wanted to create that image, to create something for my client that stood apart, that they could be proud to put out and they could use in their marketing initiatives. What happens above water, though? Doesn't mean that you can't shoot things 
above water without water and light. We know this. This is no Photoshop, folks. This is shot in Waimea Bay and for two weeks out of the entire year, the light comes straight through the middle of the bay. And when it comes straight through the middle of the bay, it is only in the section right in the middle and the sides of the bay and the mountains are all in shadows for 45 minutes to an hour. So when this happens, it is so bright in the middle of that stream of light coming in as opposed to what's in the shadow still where the sun hasn't touched that we are able to underexpose this to create the proper exposure. But by doing that, I'm able to drop out the background. I'm able to drop out that. Yeah, you could do it in Photoshop, but I want to do this in camera. It's so much more satisfying in camera and it saves you a lot more time behind the computer. I'd rather be out in the field than behind the computer trying to edit something like this. Finding these moments of light in the way it reflects. I found many more locations like this that have done this. But it's looking for that and seeing it in a different way, seeing how the sun's coming up in different places to create that dramatic effect. I'm using a 7200. If you were to pull out to shoot with even a 50 or a 16 to 35, you'd see the outline of the mountain above this. But by shooting it tight, I knew with that lens, I'm using the 7200 F4 um, image stabilizer. And the reason I was using the F4 in this instance is because it's half the weight and half the size. And so in the water, that makes a huge difference. When I'm trying to swim with that, the 2.8 is a magnificent lens and very sharp. I use it on land. But in the water, having that mobility um, and then coupled with the 1DX Mark II, hard to beat. Here's another image and usage of using light. If I was any higher, any lower, I'm shooting from a helicopter here, any higher, any lower, you would lose my friend Ryan here hiking. He would be in that darker cloud or he would be in the lower horizon on the city. Control your environment and control your settings of what you're doing. You have a certain level of control. I told the helicopter, we need to go just a little, okay, right here, this is the spot. And I was telling him what I was looking for, but control that. Because if I didn't control that, if I didn't have in that moment controlled, I would be in trouble in this moment. I would not have loved this image as much. And this is when the new Canon EOS R came out. And this was probably the first time it ever went in a helicopter. And we were using this before it had um, launched. And I was using the 2870, I believe, um, RF lens and just gorgeous. This was the this is in Kauai and we were shooting and how do you highlight a product? How do you make it exciting? We we're trying to highlight the sleeve that was on her wetsuit that she's wearing there and kind of just finding that moment of her. And this is with a 50 millimeter lens. A lot of times I like to shoot wide open using an ND helps, underexposing slightly helps. I have found underexposing my camera a few um, if I'm shooting an aperture priority on some in certain instances, not always, usually manual, I am able to get a deeper blue color. I'm able to get deeper blues within my water and the ocean when under underexposing that. And here again with the 50 millimeter as she goes over, but again, highlighting that sleeve on her wetsuit. Malia, and this was just the side of the road. And you know, I have my camera in the water housing because it's pouring rain all over, but just stopping on the side of the road to capture a moment like this, you can see a slight blur in the water and, and knowing when to do that, and again, utilizing the 14 frames per second, I fired a ton of photos in order to find that sharp photo of Malia in this moment with getting that little bit of motion in the rain coming down. A little bit different. Uh, you wouldn't expect a snowboarder by the ocean, but this is a Maui born and raised professional surfer. So you know, very Johnny Tsunami, I guess, in that sense where he came from Hawaii, but he's a professional snowboarder, surfer and everything. And so we wanted to show the link and we're actually on Big Island here going from the ocean. And we went all the way up to the Mauna Kea summit in order to snowboard and do a little photo shoot. So these were some of the photos and this is using an over under port, but this is with the 24 millimeter lens and you get a different blur. You don't get as much of a motion blur, but you're getting that water like blur right in the middle there. And to me, that 24 as a lifestyle image is just magical. So
So this is the this is a buddy of mine doing an air as I'm swimming back into the water or back into the beach after a long day of shooting out at Pipeline. And here we have Koa Smith. This is Koa Smith out at Pipeline. And this is with a, you know, I'm not using an ND, but I shut down my shutter speed down to a 30th of a second. And again, guys, 14 frames per second on the 1DX Mark II. The 1DX Mark III has even more frames per second. I'm excited about that because you're shooting loose out of this entire sequence. One, this image, maybe one other, we're slightly in focus. This was the one I wanted. Not every photo, not every moment, as they're coming to you, you want to move with them. And I'm treading water here. I'm holding a 50 millimeter lens in the camera housing. Uh, if I had to guess, the camera housing is about eight to 10 pounds with the lens. So, you know, you're, you're treading water, holding that above, focusing it, try not to get wiped out, try not to hit the reef while holding still. So that's how we're able to get an image like this. And again, that's about a 30th of a second. But I didn't want to use, lose the detail in the white water crashing over on the left side of the screen. So that was a very important thing of adjusting my aperture in order to compensate for that, to make sure that I had the best image possible of what I wanted. Here's Koa Rothman at Pipeline. And again, with a slow shutter, about 30th of a second. And we call this golden hour. Golden hour is my favorite time of the day. It is a time when you get the colors like this, your day is ending. There's no better place in the world than being out at Pipeline at the end of the day. It is truly magical. And, you know, I want to, freezing the image is amazing. And these are such powerful and beautiful waves. But when you can slow it down like this and show that speed of what's going on and capture that moment, it's something unique. This is out at Pipeline again, and this is with a 50 millimeter lens as you can see a little bit more frozen with the water and seeing everything with the proper exposure. You never wanna blow out your highlights. And you wanna make sure that you have that detail in the clouds as well as the white water um, while maintaining a proper exposure. And again, I underexposed slightly and you're seeing these deep blues within this wave. And what you're seeing on the bottom of the frame is me pulling below the surface of the wave as I'm coming through there. Next, we have a little video, and this was shot with the 1DX Mark II um, in Mexico, and they're actually doing step off. So I'll narrate it because there's no audio to this. So this is a buddy, Luke Davis of mine, and they're doing step offs with this. And what they're doing is the jet ski is matching the speed of the wave. And we are maybe six hours out of uh, Guadalajara, and we are... Um, there's so much current and water moving, as you can see the jet ski there in the background as Luke goes. And I'll show you a couple more. So this is Noah Beshin getting ready. And as he just kind of stalls for the wave, the current is moving too quickly. It is possible to paddle, but it's very, very difficult. And very few people do that in this location. Actually, no people are doing it these days. The waves were so large and so much water moving. Just untouched, perfect waves, black sand beach, no one around. So as you can see, here's Jay Davies and he's just stalling here. And this again, I am using a 7200 on the back of a jet ski with the 1DX Mark II shooting this, 4K. And this is raw. Amazing little moments to me. It's just like, puts you right there and it's, not easy as we're moving with the jet ski to frame and hold up and just kind of get that ready. Still dry. Came off to the beach, never got his hair wet. Perfect wave. So let's talk a little bit about lenses. Let's talk about where and how you apply them or, or how you pick what lens you're shooting with because it can really make or break a photo with surfing. It, it can really change your perspective. It can really change the outcome of what you're doing. So this is in Tahiti and this is with a fisheye lens, a Canon eight to 15 millimeter fisheye. And I wanted to get, I kept seeing this, this goes back to the vision, envisioning that moment, envisioning that image that you wanna create and do. 
And so I kept seeing this, but you can see just in the middle of the frame, there's a little like kind of stick person right in the middle there. And that's actually another photographer. And that's where you're supposed to sit. But I knew in order to get an image of this sort, I need to be deeper. I need to be where you don't want to sit, but I needed to for this shot. And so envisioning that and waiting for that right moment, it all came together. This ended up being a cover of Surfer Magazine of my friend Koa Smith. And to me, it just shows you why you're using a fisheye to encompass that whole thing. No other lens could get the lines going up over it or the wave crashing down on the right side of me. I'm inside behind him in this thing. Here is Dengadowskis. This is in Tahiti again, and this is with a 16 to 35. The reason I like a 16 to 35 for this type of angle of photography is it shows how wide the wave is. It is such a sharp lens. I'm actually using the 16 to 35 F4 Canon lens, and that's because I know it's sharp corner to corner, and it's just spectacular in autofocusing for this moment. And I'm able to get this of Dane as he's getting ready through this massive wave. Sometimes though, 50 millimeters a call. And this was just as the sun had set. You can see the highlights right on the top of the wave and the white water on the left side there. And Nathan Florence is going through. The lens is just pulling beneath the surface of the water. And, but you want to hold the detail. I still have enough highlights in him that I can tell it's him. He's not a full shadow. Sun is on my back, but it's very low. And I have all the detail in the white water. And that's something very important. And in these moments when you're sunset or sunrise, you wanna keep changing that exposure. You wanna keep changing it to make sure that you're adjusting for that, whether it's your ISO, your aperture. Another tip, do not go beneath 800th of a second when shooting action in the surf. You will start getting blur after that. I'd recommend at least 1,000 if you have to 800 at the bare minimum. And with the amazing technology with these Canon cameras, you can adjust your ISO on that without losing or compromising quality or detail. So do not go below, if you're trying to shoot surf, do not go below 800 of a second. Here we have Jamie O'Brien in Mexico and some spectators and I am using the Canon 500 millimeter lens and I'm sitting back behind them, very lucky. I did not know he was gonna do a massive air like this in this moment, but preparing myself and visualizing what was gonna happen it all lined up perfectly for him to be above their heads so high up in the air like that and use the compression from that lens in order to capture this moment. When you're on land and when you're shooting with these, I'm going even higher of a shutter speed to ensure that I have a tack sharp photo when shooting. Danny Fuller, pipeline. And just, this is that blue I'm talking about as you underexpose, as you can see how blue that is getting, I am getting a little hot in the um, highlights in the top middle there, but it's okay to me, I'm getting all the detail in the wave and that's okay if I'm compromising just a little bit in that way in order to get these deep, deep blues. And this is with the 50 millimeter Canon lens 1.2. Um, I'm probably at about an F2 in this photo. Shots from land, this is uh, again, this is a 70 to 200 and it is an ideal lens for lineup shots. The 70 to 200 kind of gives you that perspective of being right there. I think it's that sweet spot around 85, but it gives you that range so that you can shoot it. So putting these people in perspective right in front of the wave, you know, they're marveling at it. Guys, if you have them in a pipeline, best place in the world to see surf. As a spectator, you can sit on the beach there. You are so close to the action. It is incredible. It is my favorite place in the world to shoot at. And for this very reason, we've actually done quite a few um, Canon destination workshops and they have been incredible out at Pipeline around the Pipe Masters. So hopefully you guys can join us one day on one of those coming up soon. You can't always plan for things, but you need to be prepared. This is again in the wake of Wayful. And I kept seeing as the surfers were flying past the sunrise coming up there. And so by upping my aperture, I was able to close it down a little bit in order to get such a sun flare. But I did get very lucky to get it right between his arms because any shift in any direction probably wouldn't have been as impactful. So it does come with preparedness and a great deal of luck. We have a few more images to go over here um, and then we'll turn to some questions in a little bit. So this is, Kelly Slater on the left and Reef McIntosh on the right 
at the Eddie Cal in 2009. It was something I wasn't, I had always dreamed of my life. My dad pulled me out of school several times to go to the Eddie Cal. It is a thing that stops the entire island here. Everyone is here for such a historic day. So to be the one shooting in the water, I don't know if I ever dreamed of that. I was so honored, but I was prepared. And when this moment came, it was something that was like out of a dream. It was something that I'll always remember and such a special moment to be the photographer shooting for the Eddie Cow in the water. And this is actually in 2016. And in 2016, I was asked to shoot again. It doesn't run every year. And that's a crazy thing. I've only seen two in my career. I've seen four in my lifetime. So they wait for the waves to be 20 feet. That's 20 foot Hawaiian, 40 foot faces minimum. Hi guys. 40 foot minimum in the face. And so this is Mark Healy dropping off the wave. In this one, I actually use a Canon ADD with a 24 to 105. Why did I do that in 2016? The reason was I wanted to utilize the Wi-Fi built in. So at the time, I didn't have the capabilities on the 1DX2. The 1DX3 now has it built in, which I'm so excited about. But at the time in 2016, it was the right thing to do was to use this, the Canon ADD in this way. And what I did was I was able to send the photos to my phone, which was in a water housing next to me, and upload them to social media almost instantaneous. In this day and age, people want to see that. Between sets of the live feed that they were doing video-wise, they were then scrolling through social media. They were seeing DSLR quality images right on their social media within minutes, thanks to the Canon ADD. It was insane, the technology of what we can do to bring those type of quality images to social media within minutes. And here's a few more of those moments. And this was just, it started getting too big. The waves at 30 feet, 60 foot faces close out the bay. That is insane. So here, if you look to the bottom right jet ski, there's a little red vest and it's getting ready to dive bobbing up. All the jet skis are running in because the entire bay is closing out, meaning there's nowhere to go meaning they have to run the jet skis up the sand, turn them around and try to get them go after the sets go. It's mayhem, it is just chaos. That's me diving under on the right side there. I'm gonna be left by myself swimming. I swam for eight hours straight this day. Why? Because this had never happened before. This, this was a historic day. This is a historic moment. If I went in to eat something for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or drink something, and miss the best wave of the day, I would have never forgave myself. And I knew this was what I had prepared for, what I had trained for, and what I was ready for. My equipment was handling in there. I didn't have to change in batteries. I had extra batteries on the jet ski in case. Never had to go through it. The camera handled all day. I wanted to be able to record these historic moments, and I'm so glad. Guys, disclaimer, I couldn't even look at my images for days after. I had to hand it over to my photo agent. He helped me to facilitate and get them out. It, it was so much emotion and adrenaline from this day of being in the water and being in the waves all day, diving under these waves. When I dove under this wave here and multiple other waves, I would, the water would go black. I've never seen that before. You always see a little bit of light where you go. I was going 20 to 25 feet deep, straight down, turn around, swim as hard as I could to get back up to the surface. Pretty terrifying. So as we wrap up here in the next four or five photos, I just wanted to bring you to a few other like of my favorite moments here. And this is a turtle, um, little green sea turtle. And, you know, using the 24 millimeter again, you can see my depth of field. You can see the detail of the turtle and what I'm trying to shoot here. And it draws your eye right to the turtle as he kind of glides through the water. I wanted to show you a couple more of just the you know, swimming and shooting this triathlete. And we were trying to highlight this goggles and show the gold in the goggles and the lens. And we ended up finding that this was the correct image and way to do as he breathed, but he couldn't break it. You want to have it authentic. If I had him just posed there, you wouldn't have the water spray coming off. So thanks to the 14 frames per second, I had him swim back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to get this image. And I'm using the 50 millimeter lens here and shooting that. And it's something that I knew the image of what I wanted, and we were then able to create something like this in the packaging. So I have one more video for you and one more photo, and they're very special to me. 
So watch this video, and as we kind of go through this, I'll show you a little bit more and tell you what's going on. This is actually in Indonesia, a very remote location in Indonesia. And this is actually nine years ago. This is me shooting. As you can see my buddy of mine surfing. We're a very remote location, guys. But look what happens in this wave. Do you see that debris? That's the sound of the water too, in case you didn't know. But this is the result. And this is an image of mine that is so impactful to me. It's so powerful. It's something that to this day, I get requests to utilize it for education purposes or sustainability. And to me, I love the ocean. I love nature and we need to be more sustainable. And for me to be able to create an image with such impact that people have seen, this is on the cover of National Geographic European edition. It's been in countless spreads, um, multiple other covers. And it's something that is like so special that I could produce something that can create actual change. This is my wave of change. And so with that, I'm gonna just go back into my video. Can you guys see me? Am I back in? Yep, you're back. We see you. So, wow. <laughs> so I just want to show you a little bit more of that. Yeah, there's a, that was a lot. So I, I'm sorry, and it's it's um, took you all over the world there, folks. And it's something that I love doing, and it's I feel that the love for the ocean is what inspired me to shoot photos, and I find that a lot of people probably worldwide. And the ones listening here, you're shooting things that you truly love, that you truly care about. And that comes through your imagery, that comes through your social networks or your portfolio or what you put out or what you send out. It, it's something so special. Yeah, I mean, that last image, I have a couple of friends who are photographers and, and use their imagery for you know awareness and uh, try and fundraising and things like that to save the planet. You know, we only have one. So yeah. that, that that last image definitely uh, was super impactful. I mean, all of your work is is so beautiful. So it's, and it's, you know, we're sitting here going, oh my gosh, that's so sharp. And look <laughs> at those droplets and like, it, you know, just really, really awesome. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, did you have a little bit more? Thank or you so you much. want a couple of questions? Yeah, if, if there's some questions for me, I did want to explain a little bit. So I do have, you know, two light panels I just wanted to do. It's so crazy because this is where we are now, you know, doing virtual and I'm sitting here in Hawaii. Um, people are hopefully around the world safe and well and, and tuning in on this stream. And I'm just using a G7X uh, Mark III plugged in on the USB-C going through Zoom. And um, I have multiple light panels just for cleanliness. There's a light panel above me um, to the side, but it's crazy what we are in this world. And I hope everyone is doing well and safe out there. Me too. Agreed. I think uh, we're still navigating how what our new normal looks like uh, because I don't, this isn't going to go away anytime soon, but we have to kind of find our path back to uh, working again and, you know, being out in the world, um, especially as a traveler. That's absolutely uh, I, I love to travel as well and obviously have not been able to do that. Um, so let's we have a couple of questions. Um, I think people have been just absolutely. like listening and viewing your work and then there's a lot of like wow that's so cool um or amazing or mm -hmm. awesome um but a couple of quick questions and then um we'll go from there yep so uh, one person i think i know you've talked about setting some you talked about your aperture some mm -hmm. i think at one point you mentioned to not go keep your shutter speed like at one one eight hundredth of a second or above um could you talk just a little Correct. bit more about maybe your go-to settings um, maybe especially on the surf uh, work, white balance, shutter speed, kind of what, your, what is your starting point? I mean, you're a pro, you've been doing this for a long time, um, but giving those starting points could help people if they want to experiment and try some of this on their own too. Absolutely. So, you know, the reason that you're not wanting to go below 800th of a second is because you want to freeze that water. You want to freeze those water droplets and have that tack sharp image. So 
you never generally need to go above two thousandths of a second though. So that's that kind of sweet spot, thousand to two thousand. There's no need to go to five thousand to freeze the water. Anything over is going to freeze the water. Anything above is excessive. You know, I, as you saw a lot of the images, I like to shoot with a wide open aperture. And I like to do that. I like to stop it down, like have just a wide open and be able to get that depth of field and shoot those images. And again, I'm using AI servo with that. I am tracking with it and I'm using single point and I'm able to move my point. I'm moving my point constantly when I'm shooting, whether it's commercial work or just action in the water, I am constantly moving my focus point to ensure the eye is focused, the product is focused, the surfer is focused, whatever I need it to be, I'm ensuring that I'm in control of that. A lot of times, and you may say like, oh man, like you could use just a cluster of these things, but when you're shooting surf and water, the surface of the water is not your subject that you want to focus. You want the surfer that's over there. So if you focus on the water plane that's here, you just screwed yourself. You got it all out of focus. So that's one thing it, it learns by trial by error. Now getting into more of the settings, you know, manual. I mean, if, if you're shooting in the water, you want to test it. The beauty of digital is you can test and shoot and look at that. Trust your meter. I'm looking through that and I'm making sure on the test ones, well, that wasn't a good wave coming, but I tested it. Now I ensured that my whitewash is not blown up. I don't want just white whitewash. I want to see those detail of those drips coming through. And that takes precise measurement and knowing of your dials and your um, just bracketing it correctly. So I hope that helps. That totally helps. Um, <clears throat> another question, when I'll ask a gear question and then I'm gonna ask a non-gear question. Uh, someone was asking, do you use any kind of filters at all? Any polarizing filters or just anything like that? So, um, no polarizing filters actually. I think polarizing filters could be a very interesting one. I shoot in very, much like a lot of harsh lights. I like to shoot in more of the color times. Uh, if it's perfect in good waves, then I'm gonna be shooting midday. But I do use the ND filter for the video, um, as well as some of my photographic moments. And it really just depends on the look you're trying to get. I think a polarizing filter could be beautiful in the certain settings, but it also would limit you because in the water, you couldn't adjust too much or change on your polarizing filter. So what you have and how you had it, you'd really have to adjust your settings for that. Okay. Um, and then what kind of safety gear are you wearing when you're taking surf pit, uh, surf photos, uh, flippers and a life vest, uh, anything else, you know, on that regard? Absolutely. You know, as you saw, I was very minimal in there because I don't want to get in the other's ways. So I'm using Defin swim fins. They're, the best fin that you could possibly use for shooting photos. It's what everyone's been using and something that comfort as well as speed. You don't want to use a dive fin. And the reason for that is you don't have the maneuverability. So you saw how short they were. They weren't your atypical like diving fin. Diving fin, you're using a different muscle in motion. You're getting a little more speed as you're getting up to speed when you're moving it. But these shorter da fins, D-A-F-I-N, is one that you are able to maneuver or go back and forth change how you need to go forward back anything you need to do to get into that perfect position when shooting surf so i hope that helps and then in when i was wearing the red vest the red vest was actually a special piece that was made in collaboration with aqualung utilizing the life vest technology that you see on like planes so i'm able was able to pull it up to four times with four co2 tanks in the middle of my back and it would inflate my full vest. So this was if I was about to black out, very scary thought, you pull it, you come up to the surface, at least you're not 50, 40 feet below surface and they can't find you. So that would bring you up onto your back. So that is a safety pre precaution. In the early ones, you couldn't deflate it. Terrifying. Because you pull it, you come to the surface and there's a 50 foot wave on your head. All you could do is hold your head and make sure that you didn't get your head ripped off. Now you deflate it and you can pull it four more times so you don't have to keep changing your cartridges. It's scary. I mean, in these waves, it's very dangerous. I do wear a helmet and a helmet is very important because it is not only because of my camera, 
which is dangerous. The reef, but surfer surfboards coming flying at you, other cameras coming at you. So having that little bit more of extra protection is a very important thing to do. And it's made by GATH, G-A-T-H, and they make a surf helmet that we use. We're not using just normal bike helmets. This is streamlined and made for the ocean and the water. So yeah, hope yeah, that helps. That sounds pretty treacherous actually. <laughs> um, and I actually was just <laughs> curious, like have you done dive certification and things like that for some of your underwater stuff? Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I've been swimming and diving all my life. I was never scuba certified. And finally, when I was on a shoot for Aqualung, they're like, you're coming two days early and we're going to get you certified. So I think I'm probably one of the only people from Hawaii that has been certified in Sardinia. And the people, the certified, the scuba like class school was so baffled that someone from Hawaii was getting certified by them. They loved it, but I finally got certified and it was more of a safety precaution. I generally don't like to do scuba when I'm shooting, especially if it's in shallow waters, 30 to 45 feet, 50 feet, um, because I'd rather be diving up and down, changing and having the different settings. Again, these housings are not dive housing. So going below, I'm very limited to how I can adjust my controls as opposed to going back up. So a lot of my things I'm liking to use natural light. So generally when I shoot scuba, I'm going, if I'm shooting of scuba divers, I'm 20 to 30 feet maximum, um, which is an easy dive up and down as opposed to putting on scuba gear. But those are some pre precautions. I've taken a lot of breathing. I try to swim as often as possible as like my cross training um, and just staying in shape and staying ready for that moment. And that's such an important thing, you guys. Whatever you want to shoot, whatever you want to do, you need to have those, that preparedness, that training, that ability, whether it's the hiking, whether it's a thing, whatever you're shooting, and then know that subject, that's how you're going to be able to get these photos. Well, yes, I agree. I mean, I can see that being a very physical uh, type of photography. Yeah. You know, even doing uh, editorial shoots is also physical. Um, but yeah. that's kind of next level. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's kind of it for our questions here. Did you have any like closing thoughts or anything like that before we um, wrap it up? Absolutely. Well, I just firstly, again, thank you, Glazers, for having me and Kyle and Canon for allowing me to be here. I'm just very recently a Canon Explorer of Light. And it's always been a dream of mine to be a part of something like that. And so to be here is such an honor. So thank you everyone for taking your time on this Saturday. Hope everyone is doing well and enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, a, a friend of mine here in Seattle was so excited when I told him that we had you for this event. He was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, he's been a fan of your work for a very long time. Thank you. As I know a lot of people are. Um, but it's nice when you, like, you know somebody who, you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, but absolutely thank you so much, you so much. That, that means a lot it really um, your images are, are truly inspiring in the stories and, and the impact that they can have um, on our environment and to help tell those stories too because um, it is something that we should be looking at on a, on a regular basis um, I'm just going to take a second absolutely. to let you guys know about a couple more things with glazers um, we do have some Canon promos that are available if you registered for this session then um, you should have gotten an email this morning that had those offers in there, so go check your email. If you haven't registered, please go register. It's not too late, um, and you'll get a follow-up email with those that information as well. Um, the store is open Monday through Friday for uh, curbside pickup and limited customers in the building, so we are open. We can allow a few people in at a time based on uh, the staff that's available. Um, but basically the best option will be go to our website and place your orders for the things that you want to get. You can do curbside pickup or have them shipped. Um, I'll also mention that Kyle will be joining us again on Thursday and he's going to do a session on the Canon EOS R with some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of that camera. So um, that's all we have for right now. We've got one more session coming up in um, just a little while and Zach Thank you so much for your time and your images and your Thank inspiration. You. We are so grateful. It, it's very lovely. So Thank we, you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Everybody have a good day. Thank you Thank so you much. Bob.